Yeah, I think uh, there's a few key themes. Uh, I think the first thing is really about getting the, uh, let's say, the infrastructure in place to enable digital. So what does that mean? Uh, we see technologies coming like 4G and soon 5G uh, that we think can really change the lives of uh, Malaysians. Uh, and not just Malaysians, but also Malaysian businesses. But to do that, you really need to, let's say, fix the uh, the infrastructure, uh, or if you will, the plumbing so that the water can flow. And the water would be, let's say, the different digital applications. So I think that's one big area, how you prepare your uh, access network, transport, etc., cetera, for, for digital. Then I think in uh, the digital space, there's kind of uh, three, uh, three main uh, focus areas. One will be around, uh, let's say, really... Uh, transforming the customer experience, like the way I interact with the service provider. So uh, more and more, I mean, my expectations have been built by what I've gotten used to with over-the-top services. So I want these sort of zero-touch type uh, engagements with the operators. I think that's one big area, uh, changing their touch points. Uh, second one is really around uh, programmable networks. So 5G is really the, the first technology that's not only about radio. It's about uh, the full, you could say, telco digital stack. Uh, and there you have the ability to do what you call like network slicing uh, and uh, really make, let's say, uh, a network that is unique to an industry, even if it's the same network. So maybe what the requirements for the consumer retail business might be very different from what oil and gas needs. Uh, it's also programmable networks. is also about being able to uh, distribute uh, workloads in a flexible way. So you can use infrastructure uh, better and, uh, and that way probably save money. The uh, the third area is really around, let's say, automation and uh, artificial intelligence. So what we see here is as you get these more programmable networks, uh, there's a lot of room to create, uh, let's say, innovations and development on top of these networks to really enable operation and reduce the cost. So the cost could be anything from the number of people required to run the applications to uh, the amount of money you spend on electricity, uh, floor space, and data center, et cetera. So those are kind of the three areas around uh, the digitization of the touch points for the service providers, uh, making programmable networks, and then uh, really automating the uh, operations. So uh, I think there's two ways to look at this. Uh, way number one is it's, uh, and I think this has also been presented today, it's actually a question of survival for the telco operators. Because uh, if I take, again, me as a consumer, I mean, I'm expecting this fantastic experience just like I'm getting, uh, let's say, if I use YouTube. So this digitization, which is not really a technology thing, it's, I mean, everything in operation, you could say on the one hand, it's necessary to survive. But on the other hand, it's also a way to create so much more agility and flexibility in the service provider's uh, environment so they can launch new services quicker, faster, uh, and so on. So I, I think it's kind of uh, both about survival, but also about uh, about growth. And, I mean, the opportunities you get in digital are, I mean, the ability to create uh, new types of uh, applications, new types of experiences that I'm willing to pay for and that also industries would be willing to pay for. And I think that's the great opportunity. So uh, new customer experience for the retail business, but also starting to connect uh, industries. And you need a digital stack to be able to do that. So uh, my view on that, I mean, that's a, a, a typical existential question that we're faced with in industry. I mean, uh, for the most part, I, I wouldn't say it's about taking on competition from you know what you could call as these over the top or web scale players, it's actually about as a service provider enabling the best possible experience from these uh, uh, over the tops to my customers. If I'm a product service provider, then of course there might be areas where we see um, some of the web scale players trying to compete with the telco service provider. And I mean the advantage that they have there, the, the service providers, is they're using a globally adopted technology. Uh, that has massive volume, massive ecosystem, which means they can do it very low cost to, to deliver the broadband services. Uh, but of course, you could see that. Uh, there, I think they're quite well equipped. Uh, but the, the big problem is to figure out how to partner with these web scale players in the right way in order to deliver a good experience. I think that's probably the challenge that uh, our customers face the most and where they need to focus. But when you want to do uh, this type of transformation, and I would say in our business in general, the key fundamental problem that keeps the CEO awake and I mean keeps me awake is about execution. So it's not about having the technology roadmap. Uh, that's like the hygiene factor. What you really need is it, it, it 
it's more of, a, if you will, like a people problem because execution is about people. So it's really making sure you have an aligned vision, uh, that you're building the skills, uh, you have a, a reason to want to change, um, and then really aligning the organization around that change and, and showing what the future should be and really ensuring that you're, you follow that, uh, that plan. So for me, it's not the technology uh, challenge. That's just an enabler. It's really about how to, how to lead the people and execute. I mean, it's an execution business. Oh, <laughs> my